Well, welcome. welcome. I'm so glad you could all be here um, on this wonderful April 21st. It's a beautiful day. And uh, we're so glad to have you here. And I'm going to uh, open up in a prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day. We thank you for the beautiful town that we live in. This whole area is just a little slice of paradise. And we thank you. We praise you for all the ways that you provide for us. And we thank you for this historic society and for every person that's here tonight. We just ask a special blessing on their homes, their families, and their health. And just be with us tonight and continue to lead us and guide us. We love you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. And I've asked uh, Jim if he will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Beach first, 
and the first thing we did is jump in our bathing suits and run into the Gulf. And then we started all skidding water because we were used to Lake Michigan, which was freezing and that was warm and it was salt water. We didn't, we had never been in salt water. But um, I, this tapestry that we have right here, um, Alan Davis, some of the things are no longer here. Alan Davis, uh, these are some of the iconic uh, things in Gulf Breeze. And Alan Davis, and uh, Beth Parker is Alan Davis's granddaughter. And I just, I was at a, a brunch and she was showing her house. And when I saw that, I said, oh my goodness, could we have that for the uh, presentation? So she said, we were welcome to use it. But that was a wonderful place at Alan Davis Seashell. Probably most of you remember it. You could get such beautiful shells there and um, everyone hated to see that go. But when we moved here, the, the bridge was two lanes and I went to Catholic High and we would be so excited because a lot of mornings we would get stuck on the bridge because they had someone that actually opened the bridge if a boat was going through. So, I mean, it, things have really <coughs> changed since then. Um, the um, Shoreline Drive stopped at, right at the top of the hill. So all of this, you know, wasn't here when, when we first moved here. And um, so we really just, you know, We've seen it just grow so we much. Were pioneers. Yeah, we were pioneers. <laughs> it's, it's hard to believe that you know we've been here that long. But anyway, I was the only one of the sisters that never left Gulf Breeze. Uh, mm -hmm. Ivan took our home. Uh, we had a home on the Sound, right across from Portofino, so we had to live in Chipley for a little while. But we we found another house here in Gulf Breeze, and and I plan to stay here as long as I can and love the area. And I'm so glad that we decided to come to Gulf Breeze. The other choice would have been Milton, not to put Milton down, but uh, we've all loved Gulf Breeze. So those are my earliest memories of Gulf Breeze. And I'm gonna pass the mic to Barbara. Okay. All right. And just in like what, uh, when, when the first council, Daddy was on the first council as well as Davis. Um, so when they incorporated the city, and they, uh, Daddy's one of the ones that I know really fought to put the sidewalks in, because we were all kids, and he did not want us on the road. And so the sidewalks from the, that go up Shoreline and all the way around and down Fairpoint, because now we've got all these, you know, the multi multi-use paths now too. But that original sidewalk, which there's still some original pieces of that left, um, that was you know, Daddy really fought for that, and that was really neat. Um, the thing I remember about Pensacola Beach is uh, the shells were so amazing, and the thing was, there were shells everywhere. So, I mean, not only on the beach, but when we walked behind Ariel, you know, behind the houses and all, there, it was just amazing to us, because we just didn't have that in uh, Indiana. Um, the, uh, and the thing on Shoreline Park that I remember as a kid is, um, we used to go to the eagle's nest all the time. How many of you remember the eagle's nest? There, there was a tr big, one of the big pines in there and there was a huge eagle's nest up on the top. And so that was just like a, a thing that we did. And I used to always think too that it was so hilly here. Now we came from Indiana that was flat as a pancake. And so the hills on Shoreline. Then I went to New Jersey and when Dave is from Pittsburgh, and then I found out what hills really are. We have like mounds, you know, but, I, but it's funny, I used to think how hilly it was here. So, and uh, Thrill Hill on High Point, we used to ride our bikes, you know, you'd go up and ride down there. Anybody did, did that here either? Oh yeah. yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, um, and the other thing that I used to do, uh, where the house that, we, that Diane was talking about is three 
300 Shoreline, and it's right on the corner of Washington and Shoreline. And then right down from that is Eufaula that goes down, and I don't even know if it had a name back then, but there was a street that went down. There, I, there were no homes down there. But after school every day, we had, a, we had our a dog, we had a, an Airedale Spencer, and I used to walk him every day after school, and I'd walk down to the beach and walk all the way to Deer Point, and then I'd go in and come back through the woods. And there wasn't anything down there. It was just so amazing. So now, I don't even know if you could walk, walk down there. Um, the, um, oh, and, the, and then the other thing that I, the wonderful memory I have, and I think Mary did it after, after I did it, but my father used to love to fish, and he would um, fish, is this working? Yeah. Um, he would go out, he would get up really, really early, uh, I think it was like five o'clock in the morning, and go out to the pier on Pensacola Beach. And Daddy would go to the end of the pier and catch the big fish, but I would go like halfway and catch the bait fish. And so I loved doing that, and uh, that was a fun thing. And Daddy was a, a good, he didn't cook much, but he, when he, he would cook the fish. Yeah, and it was wonderful. Um, and then of course, guys and dolls, and, and th Teresa had a couple of pictures, they're on the board there, but uh, it's hard to find any pictures of guys and dolls, but uh, that, where the Bank of America is now, that was Hoffman Center, and the right on the corner where that curve is, that was the windows of the <coughs> Guys and Dolls department store. And it was a children's department store. Gretel Bilby was the original owner, but my, mo my mother bought it from her. Mother was a, an entrepreneur at heart. Um, our grandfather, her father, had a paint store in Chicago, and mother worked there when she was little, and it was just in mother's blood to be an entrepreneur. And so she bought that store, and it was uh, infants through, teen through teens, and it had a toy department, and it had a shoe department, and a toy department. It was the coolest store. Do some of you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of kids, uh, it, when a lot of kids, their parents shop there for them and all. But, um, so we all worked there as kids, and my favorite thing was to change the mannequins in the window. <laughs> I, I love doing that. And then I got to go into Pensacola. There was the mercantile uh, thing, store, in that area on Main Street and the big brick warehouse. Um, and they had, uh, you could, I would go there and get the toys for the toy department. And we had toys and games and stuffed animals. I think that's how my love of stuffed animals, you know, I still have that. Um, but that was a lot of fun. And let's see. Um, oh, and then the, the, yeah, what Diane said about the bridge. Um, the, the original bridge, uh, was pretty scary because it was only two lanes and of course it was three miles long and then it was a drawbridge and one time we used to have to take the school bus um, to uh, we went to uh, well I came here I was going into eighth grade and I went to St. Michael's in Pensacola Diane was in high school and um, but uh, the one time the, the wheels came off the bus on the bridge and they know everybody was saying we had a young fella who was a, he was a, um, a, I guess he was in his 20s or so, but he, he was the bus driver and he was able to keep control of the bus and so the bus didn't go off the bridge. But I can remember, you know, we were all like looking into the water, but then the parents all came and got us and it was quite, a, quite an exciting thing. And um, one of the things uh, about St. Michael's, my mother, um, one, at one point, the uh, principal, uh, I don't know if mother and daddy both went or just mother, but she called them to come in because they she wanted to talk to them about something that I was doing at school. And I, I was really a pretty good kid, and mother was pretty good, and, and she said it was about walking on a ledge. And my mother was like, well, kids are kids, they walk on ledges, you, you know, like on curves and stuff. She, she couldn't imagine. <laughs> so when she got to the high, it was, the building isn't there anymore, but it was behind where St. Michael's Church is. It was right behind there, and it was a two-story building. Well, on the sec, after the first floor, there was like a, a two-foot ledge that went around the building. 
Well, we got there so early and we were bored out of our minds, I guess, and we had to wait until school started. And so myself, and I don't know who, who did it with me, we would get on the ledge and like walk around the ledge and then the boys would have basketballs and they'd be trying to hit us. And so <laughs> that was what mother and mother couldn't believe I was doing that. So, anyway. Um, and, uh, and well, and then about the bridge, the thing with the bridge, that worry, I, well, I couldn't wait to get my driver's license. So I'm like, how am I gonna drive on that bridge? It was kind of scary to me. But see, they put the new, when I got my license, they had just finished the, the, now the one that they have just torn down, but that bridge was built in 61. And so I never had to drive on the two, the two lane bridge. Was that first one wooden? It, it, it was concrete. It was concrete. That yeah. Old, like casino shell or something. I mean, for, but for that one, though, they, they did have a wooden bridge. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, they probably did originally. Yeah. yeah. But and that part that went up and down, I think, was metal. And that was right. Yeah. And those are kind of, I think those are most of my, all right, should I marry? So are you the second daughter then? Oh, yes, I'm second oldest. And then and Julie, then Julie. Yeah. Julie's in uh, the Fabry Nursing Home. Julie has had just a lifetime of a lot of uh, medical problems and that's, con that's continued. And um, she's doing well, I mean, as well as she can do. She's got a lot of issues and that's why she's in the nursing home. But Diane sees her every week. Mary sees couple of times a month. I take her to all her appointments. So we're in constant touch with her and she's, you know, she's doing well. Um, I kind of toyed with trying to get her here for this tonight, but I, we didn't think it was gonna probably work out. But, um, but, but we are, I know my parents would be thrilled that we're all very close still and stay in touch. And so it's nice. So Julie's third and then Mary's the baby. The baby. And Julie, Julie still, she, mother always um, had us be the little mother, like Diane was Barbara's little mother. Do you remember that? You don't remember that? And then Julie was my little mother. Oh. So um, Julie always called me her baby, baby Mary, her baby <laughs> sister, and she still introduces me. That way. So I think that's funny. But um, so I, I was the youngest. We were all in a turquoise Studebaker. Um, coming down Highway 31 from Indiana to Florida. And kind of a neat thing in my life, um, for me to, you know how things come around in a circle? <laughs> we got to Spanish Fort, Alabama, and Daddy said, you know, it's gonna be too late if we keep going to Florida. We were so excited about getting to Florida. But he said, it's gonna be too late to get into our beach house, so we'll stay right here in Spanish Fort, in the Spanish Fort Hotel which is now history too. Um, and I swam in the pool the, in the morning and we ate at the little restaurant. Well, I didn't know that in 1975, I would marry my husband who's from Spanish Fort, Alabama. And now I live in his grand, the house his father built for his grandmother. <laughs> so I live in Spanish Fort, but I think it was my destiny that I was supposed <laughs> to make that round that trip. But I remember like they do that um, when we got to the beach, well, I remember that it was just so exciting that we were going to have flip-flops. I didn't even know what flip-flops were. And Daddy said they were like in, Je in Japan, they wore them, in the, you know, with those soft, funny socks. <laughs> but, you know, he was trying to prepare us. But it was neat to turn in my snow boots for flip-flops. And then I remember getting out, you know, going over that sand dune across from the house on Areola Drive, and it took my breath away, the water. And I have been in love with it beach ever since um, and my son turned out to be almost like a professional surfer because I took him from the time he was like a baby <laughs> to the beach um, so anyway I, I guess I just love that about Gulf Breeze that we were so close to the beach um, and it was just a great place to grow up and I think as what I'm finding as I am aging <laughs> that you did your um, memories of your childhood do help you have a happier adulthood, you know, I think give you a lot of happy memories. So I love my memories of Gulf Breeze. And I remember the woods too, like Barbara, but I was in the building, I was a tomboy. Daddy had really, really hoped I was gonna be a boy after three girls. <laughs> and so when I wasn't, 
he just decided I was gonna be his little tomboy. I went to the lumber <laughs> store with him. I went, I went fishing and I went golfing at Tiger Point. And I mean, everything he did, I was just right there. I was his little buddy. Um, so when we moved into Shoreline Drive, I loved the woods for building forts. And so we built forts all in the woods. Uh, Mary Lee Costick was one of my friends. She lived on Shoreline Drive too. And the girls would have forts and the boys would have forts. And we decided in our fort, we were gonna build a pit to catch the boys if they tried to get into our fort. <laughs> so one day there was a snake in our fort and I ran up the hill screaming for daddy and so he comes running with a shovel and daddy fell in the, in the pit. <laughs> and he went for crying out loud. <laughs> you could break somebody's neck. <laughs> I can still remember that. It was, I mean, it's not fun. I mean, he could have really gotten hurt, he didn't. So that was good. But, um, and then uh, he was, you know, in the council first, right? And mother went and got pedophores from Jay's Bakery for a party at our house after daddy won, you know, if he won the election. And mother let me take the leftover pedophores to school the next day. And I remember I thought that was so cool to have, I mean, those were good little kids. If I'd had enough money, I would have bought y'all some the brand, but I'd still go to Jay's Bakery and sometimes buy one for a treat. Um, but then daddy was elected the first mayor and we would, we would get phone calls at our house about everything, like a dog is loose in the back, you know, somebody's running around the neighborhood. And when they would call and ask for daddy, they would say, we want to talk to the mayor. And so Julie would sometimes give me the calls thinking they said Mary, and I'd get on the phone calls and if they said mayor, <laughs> but that's Southern draw. Yeah. yeah. So that was kind of a funny memory that I had about daddy being mayor. Um, but then this, and this is um, just a short funny story, and that's why I brought this little prop here. Um, so Barbara babysat, Diana and Barbara babysat, but I had not been allowed to babysit. And I was almost 13, and Barbara had the butlers called her to babysit, and she said, she couldn't, you had a, some prior commitment, probably a date. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I said, can I please babysit? And mother thought I was too young, but Barbara, I think you talked her into it, but I was old enough. So I was so excited. And I had worked all day up at Guys and Dolls. And um, so I came home and got in my little dress. I thought I needed to wear a dress. And I had my, um, what do you call, saddle, saddle shoes on. <laughs> I brought the Bopsy Twin book because I was reading this book and mother had said, whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Cause you know, TV went off. There were only three channels and TV yeah. went off. And she said, if they're out past 11 or 12, you have to stay awake. So I'm in the living room, just so excited. I can't wait and the doorbell rings and I open the door and there's Mr. Butler, I thought. And anyway, he said, are you ready? And I went, yes, I'm ready. And so, he opens it, he was really nice. He opened the door for me in the car. <laughs> and we start driving off and he asked me what I had done during the day and I told him I'd been working up at Guys and Dolls. Now, I'll have to explain it. That age, I was the full height I am now. I looked older than I was. And so then he asked me, where do you want to go tonight? And I was like, I looked at him, I said, to your house, of course. And he looked at me kind of funny. So anyway, he kept driving. And I thought he lived just a few blocks away. We were on Shoreline, and I thought it was just, what, it was off in the bar. And um, so anyway, he's getting up to the Bay Bridge, and I said, where are you taking me, Mr. Butler? I thought you lived close to our house. And he said, I'm not Mr. Butler. <laughs> and then he said, aren't you Judy Carter, my blind date? And I went, oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Carter, you blind date. And I know, he must have thought his friends had set him up with a doozy, you, you know, me holding a Bopsy Twin book. <laughs> So anyway, he spun that car. I can remember there wasn't that dividing thing then. So he spun that car around, got back to our house. Daddy was in charge of the police force. So he already had, Mr. Butler had shown up. I was missing. They had a police car in the driveway and he was shaking and white. I mean, he, it was awful. Um, but the funny thing was Mr. Butler still let me babysit. <laughs> Which is amazing. Anyway. So that's one of my fond memories. And I do remember um, going out to the second um, sandbar and diving for whole sand dollars. This is horrible, because now that I think about it, that was not a good thing. 
and we would sell them down. <laughs> we would always buy them from us. Um, and I just lived on the beach. I remember that mother was always kind of embarrassed. Mother had bridge clubs, you know, and parties at her house, and everybody would be telling about what their children were doing, and they were always doing real, um, I guess, high achieving things. <laughs> and she'd say, Mary's just at the beach all summer, <laughs> swimming and surfing, and I just loved the beach, so um, anyway, but uh, I don't know what else. Daddy did play Santa Claus at Guys and Dolls while he was mayor, and now my husband owns that Santa Claus booth, and when mother broke her hip and was in the um, rehab hospital for Christmas, that was the first time my husband put it on, and it was so, uh, we just enjoyed that night even going down to the emergency room, so now we, it's our Christmas tradition, we do certain things with him dressing as Santa. He really looks like and Santa. He looks just, he like, looks Santa. just like Santa. <laughs> yeah. And uh, anyway, but I did love growing up here and I love coming back. I know I thought about that today as I was driving from Alabama. Um, it just always feels like I'm coming home when I come to Gulf Breeze. And I, I feel like it's my forever home here on earth. And um, so I just have a lot of good memories of it. And I, I realized I'm a writer and I realized I've got a lot of stories I really could write about, you know, growing up here. So thank you for listening. Um, and of course, we could go on and on and on and on, but I think our time's up anyway. So does anybody have any questions? How long, uh, when did Guys and Dolls close? When Daddy moved to, um, it was um, my, um, I was going into my senior year of high school, so it would be, I think it was 1967 because Daddy had, um, they had a layoff in, Bay, in American yeah. Cyanamed, and he had been trying to find another, he was a chemical engineer. He only got paid being mayor, like five dollars, because he had that like one dollar. I think he got framed even. I don't think he ever even spent. <laughs> well, they got one dollar. He was the second mayor, yeah. I think it went out of business. Oh. Yeah, it did. Uh, but I loved working there too. Yeah. I changed. I had names for those mannequins. They were my baby doll. <laughs> Could you tell us uh, what else you did town besides? Oh, well, this whole shopping center. Oh, I worked at the Gulf Breeze. I worked for Mrs. Benson. I forgot about that, but yeah. I don't have time yeah. to tell that story. Yeah, you, you know, you Do you? Oh, Mrs. Benson building yeah. right over there. Well, you all know. Yeah, that's that's where. Bad. Gulf Breeze Dress Shop, and when I went to work for Mrs. Benson, she said, Mary, I've had these dresses for several years that I haven't sold, and they need to be shorter. They're wearing them shorter. Would you hem them? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a, like 18 years old wearing mini skirts. I hem them. <laughs> and the little ladies came in and tried them on, and Mrs. Benson was laughing, though. She didn't get mad at me. It was just funny. They could come out, and they said, I don't. I, I think we had to uh, re take them down <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and Tasty Freeze was down at the end, oh, yeah. and we loved Tasty Freeze. Oh, yeah, and, then the, and then the Gulf Breeze Post Office was also in there. And you know, Miss uh, Mr. Benson named Gulf Breeze. He was the postmaster. And then um, oh, and uh, Knowledge College was St. Anne's Church. Yeah. And we actually drove with Father Gallagher to move, well, I were with him that night to move the, the Eucharist to the new St. Anne's. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then my very best friend for, is Emma Pfeiffer, who now they were pioneers. They lived where the Taco Bell is. And um, Emma used to say they knew Daddy was coming home when they'd see his car coming across the bridge. That's how few people lived over here. So. Yeah. And the uh, and then of course where the CVS is now, there there was the the little shopping center where it was Jitney Jungle and then I think was Bogus Jordan. That Jor wasn't there when we got there. Jitney though. Jungle. Was. Jitney Jungle was. Oh. And then was Bogus Jordan attached to it? It was yeah, attached, yeah. right? Yeah. But that was Bogus Jordan Pharmacy, and it had, they had it was like an old fashioned lunch counter and a soda shop, and uh, that was quite the hangout. But how did uh, the kids uh, that you played with, uh, uh, how did they keep you when your father was the mayor? Was that in any way of, did they keep you just the I don't, I don't remember anybody treating, well, but, but I don't know. Well, 
I know that I always drove a little too fast. <laughs> so they, they liked it because I could say I was, you know, or if, or if we were in any kind of trouble, a little bit of trouble, I could say my last name and he was like, oh, just don't do that again. Or, <laughs> so my friends, they didn't really treat us any different that I remember other than they just thought it was kind of neat we, that I could get out of trouble. But I could do that anyway, being a baby. <laughs> Any other? Does anybody know if Mr. Davis still lives, Alan Davis? I don't think he is. Oh, no, he no, not Alan. No. But his, uh, his son, uh, Robert, lives right on York Street. He's, um, he's about four houses away from us. And then um, there's another son. Um, now, Sally, John, uh, Sally um, uh, Stanford was married to Alan. Yeah, but Junior. Right? No, I don't. Oh, I don't know. There's some junior cookies. There. Well, I know there's some family in there, but there are there are uh, some family around. Yeah. I was trying to get Beth, the granddaughter, the one that Davis gives to to tonight. I thought it'd be wonderful to have her. Come right. In. Yeah. And maybe I'll be able to talk her into doing it. But she said she didn't really like to get up in front of groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Gretel Bilby, the original owner of Guys and Dolls, her daughter Julie has come here uh, to some of our meetings. I can't remember her last name now, but um, uh, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. And the, you know, the thing is, like, it was a day trip to go. I, I mean, the zoo was there already, wasn't it? No, when did the zoo take come? Over then? We were building our house after we built our house. We did it when we got married. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I, that's the thing. I left, um, I graduated in 63, and then I met and married an 80 guy and left in um, 64 and went to New Jersey for 30 years. So, um, I, but I was, I came back once or twice a year uh, to visit the family. And so um, I always, you know, got to go to the beach and all. But, um, and, and then unfortunately I went through divorce. But the good thing was I met Dave in New Jersey, and he was from Pittsburgh, so and uh, we came back in 94. And so it's uh, we've been back now 27 years, going on 28. And one thing, Highway 98, uh, I married Tom Sutton, and his family lived at Hickory Shores number three near the Priory, and all the way uh, down Highway 98, there was one gas station mm -hmm. all the way down to Hickory Shores number three. Mm -hmm. And now I'm at that Good Samaritan Clinic on Wednesdays and I can hardly get across that highway to come back to Del Cruz. The traffic is so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just changed so much. The reason why I asked about Mr. Davis, uh, I know Senior probably passed away, but it must have been Robert who ran the store after he passed away. Oh, because I remember talking to him and Luella's dad were talking to him. He was still diving out in the Gulf of Mexico for sheep seashells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was diving for seashells for his uh, store. I thought that's pretty unique. And he's got a big shell in front of his house. Yeah. There. Oh, he does? That's uh -huh. his yeah. And he's yeah. always out there mowing the lawn and everything. He's, he's still very, very active. Good for him. Yeah. And that shell, that clam shell that was in front, is that Flounders. Flounders oh. has a clam oh. shell oh. Oh, from okay. Alan Davis okay. Shell okay. Shop. Nice. And they have one of the Pensacola Beach signs with the big sailfish. Flounders has a number of artifacts from Oh, that's neat. That's neat. And that sign was there. Yeah, that sign was there when we came here, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. So Flounders has the original. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, the original one is so much better than the one they replaced it oh, with. Oh, I know. Well, they took it down. They're taking it down. Are they? Because it's made out of plastic and they like it. I work for a thing like we do that. Is that amazing? It's like. <laughs> well, I think the company's doing that too. Right? Yeah. I, yeah, I think so too. I bet that sign costs $100,000. Yeah, probably. Well, so that is the story of the Schill family. And, um, 
And Mother was uh, amazing. She was involved in so many things. And we can't remember which garden club. I've got, we, I've got to find that out. Do you know it? I don't think it was Driftwood. But I've got to look. I probably have that somewhere. I I've, I've, there's probably I, some records. There was a Duck Blues Garden Club, but, but they just kept, uh, you know, getting people their own age and the drugs were going to die out when you do that. Yeah. yeah. Is that and the one probably uh, she was going to do? Wasn't there one that was home and home? Yeah, there was the home and home, but I don't think Mother, that, Mrs. Benson, that's in the scrapbook. Yeah, they, Mrs. Was Benson was in that, but I'm not sure. And then that's, um, well, anyway, we're going to talk about that a little bit later um, with our program. Um, I thought this was a program. No, 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 I mean in the, the business <laughs> meeting. Anymore. This is the program, yeah. All right, well, thank you for paying attention. And, <laughs> We are blessed to be here, and uh, and that's really too the reason I'm involved in this, and and, uh, and that Diana Mary uh, pitch in and help and all, is our parents loved Gulf Breeze. I they just loved it, and they couldn't wait to come back and retire here, and it meant so much to them. So um, it's neat to be a part of the historic society and in their honor, you know. And we have some pictures over there of. I got Mother and Daddy's wedding picture, and then we got us. That was a picture that I don't even know the years on there. That's that, that's the thing. It's good to label pictures. I, you know, we we, get, we find these photographs, and it's like there's no names and no dates, and so that's a good thing to do if you're taking pictures. Okay, well I'm gonna, um, and if you don't mind, we'll just you can sit up here too if you want. I won't, you know. 